Hi. Wow. 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 Here we are. Mm -hmm. Another day. Another podcast recording episode. Another drink, Tina. Oh, yes. Another drink. Okay. So... Let's get right to it because we're, no no because let's let's let the people know why are we in such a rush today, Miss Peru? It's not because of anything that's like wrong or anything, but like I'm a booked and blessed gal of the century, and uh-huh. I have dinner plans, and I right. was working nine to five like Dolly Parton today, and you know this because we have something that I guess we can just like announce really quickly now at the top. Oh, sure. Uh, Nick and I, Pioneers and Trailblazers, is going to be part of New York Comedy Festival this year. Yay! Yay! Um, our show is in November. November 10th. November 10th. 7 p.m. 7 p.m. Tickets are live as this episode is airing. As of now, currently speaking. Um, so you can find th- those ticket links on either of our Instagrams or on the Pioneers and Trailblazers Instagram, as well as our link tree. Yeah. We'll and while link- you're there, just follow us, comment on a photo you think where we look hot Mm -hmm. um just engage yeah no and it's gonna be really fun because for those who don't know Mm -hmm. our show is lucy follows the oregon trail computer game from the 90s if you're familiar um i like how we're starting to sound like uh, like, you know like just like giving our pitch giving our one line right right. well we're not talking about dick and cock but don't worry we will no no we will get into (laughs) that but right now we're in business (laughs) we're in business mode um so if if you're familiar with that game, uh, it's a it's a twist on that. And so each month we invite three guest comedians to come and pick a pioneer or trailblazer of their choosing. Can be anything, person, place, or thing. So something that they feel has made an impact on culture and society at large. And that is who they take on the Oregon Trail with them when we go. And with along us. The, with us. Because we're the freaking wagon leaders. We're the wagon leaders, obviously. obviously. Um, and then uh, each show, we have a different destination that we go to. And then we have different obstacles along the way that we all have to figure out how to get past and everything's current for anyone thinking it's like an old-timey simulation no like some of the past locations have been the white house the white house uh, a, ga- a gas Pre- station previous pioneers and trailblazers include uh the album teenage dream by Katy perry a pigeon nine time platinum prep prep <laughs> Prep, it's Jojo Seaway. Siwa. 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 Siway. Go see the Gen Z would know. <laughs> if you were Gen Z, you would know it was no, Siwa. I don't, no, 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 but wait. Wouldn't that be like uh, from uh, RuPaul's Drag Race Challenge? You know, like the the one from All Stars where like, they had to combine two different names. Like but, 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 Queen, but, but, Bob the Drag, Queen Elizabeth, you know? Right, but what were you? what is yours? Like Jojo Seaway, but it's like Jojo Siwa, but as as Seaway. See, I had a joke, and I mean, it kind of works. It absolutely works, and that's hilarious. Like, Z-Way, like, if it was, like, Siwa, a black drag queen. Well, Siwa and Z-Way do sound differently. I will just say that. Not to, not to hamper on your little... But it's not... But, well, have you... Do you anyways, have it's you a great show. No, real quick, real quick. I have a joke. You're, I don't think you're going to get it. You have a joke? But did you, ever, jokes. did you ever see the play on Broadway starring Jake Gyllenhaal and Tom Sturridge called... Seawall a life? No, I would never. So I was thinking it would be on a play. It would be JoJo Seawall a life. Mm. Anyway, no one is gonna know that one. Anyway, so (laughs) trust and believe we are much funnier than that. It's an off day Um, for me. Yeah, but anyway, so we'll announce the lineup. But just long story short, the reason why this links to like the reason of me being so tightly scheduled today is that I had a packed day full of things. Uh, uh, promo for my show this coming Friday here. Our show coming up. We have another thing, guys. Like, so just a lot of stuff. And so I was just... So booked and blessed. All of a sudden, I look at my clock on my phone. Mm-hmm. Not, I, I, don't, I do a watch. I don't do watches. Yeah. And then it was almost time to meet you because I met you downtown. And I was like, well... And then... I met you because I need to pick up some clothes, some shoes and clothes that I left over in like our establishment. Mm-hmm. And you were right. Maybe I, sh- maybe I didn't need to meet you. No, I fully could have. The thing was, is that. Peru- but it kept me on. Tr- it kept me like on a schedule because I like that feeling of like, this is what I'm doing. And at this time I need to be here. And I because I like, I work well under that kind of like pressure. Sure. No, I get that. I personally, because this is what happened. So. Peru lives very far, lives uptown, and uh, met me downtown. Okay, Miss Crown Heights. <laughs> don't live in Crown Heights. Oh, but Crown, uh, no, 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 don't, don't dox me. Do not dox me. Or whatever, in Brooklyn. <laughs> yeah, okay, don't dox me. Well, he actually doesn't leave. It, leave. He actually doesn't live in Crown Heights. I just miss spoke your neighborhood uh, yeah when i whatever anyway so peru lives uptown i was downtown are we bleeping that 
Well, no, because I don't live in Crown Heights. Well, yeah, yeah, factually don't. Factually don't. So anyway, um, uh, we were supposed to do this at my apartment, and then I was like, "Well, wouldn't it just be much easier for me just to come straight uptown to you?" And he was like, "Oh, I oh, have- don't dox me, uptown girl. It could be anywhere uptown from where from downtown uptown. That is so vast in general, Mama. Anyway, versus naming a neighborhood, <laughs> Crown Heights. How many neighborhoods are uptown besides the usual suspects? Does- well, it depends on where downtown you are. So uptown, uptown could be Soho. M- it could be anywhere. That's the thing." That's why oh, yeah, yeah, I'm right. thinking. I'm thinking about your safety, Thank Mama. You. Not that we would have anyone that's gonna try to like find us, but you oh. never know. Okay, well, well speaking of, speaking of, speaking of, speaking of, because this is the one we're, uh, this is what I want to start too with. The, I would. I'm not thinking about the same thing. We have group mind about two completely different things. I, I wanted to of, address the thing that was hitting my DMs. Like it, they haven't been hit since we started doing this together, pertaining us. How I posted that screenshot of somebody on Grinder being like, "Hey, I fucked your co-star." I, uh, your podcast came up on my TikTok randomly, quote unquote. Okay, no, no. So basically, what had happened was, um, and if you're seeing this, sir, trust and believe we will set up that time to have sex. And trust it and believe, will be you happening. know what we did in my basement, and it was really hot, and it was fun. So for those who don't know, um, because no one knows besides Peru, this man messages me on Grinder. I posted it on my Instagram. And oh. I told you about it. That's what I'm saying. People were like, oh, hating me. Well, for those for those who don't follow you on Instagram yet, um, basically what had happened was a man messages me on Grinder and was like, hey, what's up? And then like ten minutes later, was like, wait, I think your podcast came up on my TikTok. Anyway, randomly, I, randomly, um, I think I fucked your co-star, <laughs> and I was like, what a small world. So I obviously sent a screenshot to Peru and immediately was like, is this true? And then he was like, well, what does he look like? And so then later when I met up with him, I showed him his profile and he went, oh yeah, we've had sex. Yeah. A lot. Right? Wasn't yeah. It multiple times? Yes. It wasn't numerous, but it was multiple. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and tell me what you, tell them what you told me. That uh, you were, that you were, because fu- well, they fucked in the basement. Yeah. Well, the basement where? Of my apartment. Your apartment Out building. Uptown. Uptown yeah, apartment because building. at that point uh, I couldn't I, I wasn't really I wasn't really able to host much at that point and this person was um, visiting town like they, they didn't live in New York and w- which I think they actually live here now which they told me once they moved to New York hey I live in New York now we should meet up again because I'm here more frequently but like at mm-hmm. that time they were like finishing school or something and now I'm just like putting other information but whatever well they, um, <laughs> we can people, leave it at that people, we'll leave it at that well people go to school famously people go to school uh, and then they graduate school uh and so uh i was like okay because i'm always up for like an adventure and like you know a little bit of a of like a um a, a jolt jolt you know mm-hmm. and so i was like how about we have like this basement where there's like a side uh like corridor that's like has like two exits on both sides but both exits are closed one exit leads to like the side of the building outside and one leads to the place where you put like your recycling and whatever and then downstairs is also where like the landlord lives like their their place so it's like it's pretty broad and like secluded enough to where like you could do something and like it's part part of the excitement it's like like somebody could walk in which somebody did the second time we did You're it, kidding. we well, we heard something happening. Like somebody opened like the door before our door. Um, wait, was it this with him or with somebody else? <laughs> I, no, I, no, but I've done it. I've done it with only two people down there, but, but with this person, I did it a few times. Um, but it was hot, and um, they came, went down there. Uh, it, it, there's like a really hot thing because like you want to make sure that you wear something that's like easily accessible. You want to wear something that's like you know. So I was like in my sweatpants. I remember it was winter time, so I like wore my hoodie, and my sweatpants, but then like no underwear, so we just pull it down and pull it up, and like you oh know the in the pocket, and like you know like just got good, you know, just to get it wet, Tina. And then uh, like they like uh, I'm saying they, but like, they identify as he. He uh, um, totally rimmed me, loved it. And then, like, our, it was it was actually really fun and good. And, like, the dick was good. So, if you're listening or if this comes up randomly on your on your TikTok or your freaking whatever, it was good. It was a good time. No, and, and we, we repeated it. Yeah, and also a good kisser, too. Okay, no, love. So, yeah, yeah so he did reach out to me. And so, we th- that is on the books for, you know, eventually one of Wait, these so, days. So, then, so, after that screenshot, you did continue speaking. Um, I basically just responded and said, oh, he cooperated your story. You okay. have had sex. And he gave you a really positive review. Yeah. And he was, like, glad to hear it. And then he asked me where I lived. And I told him. And he said, hey, 
I'm not above traveling 40 minutes for ass. Which is, I guess, a compliment. <laughs> but yeah. also, like, in, beyond those random people on Grindr that hit you up from, like, 200 miles away or, like, 600 miles. You know those people, that, those randos yeah. that hit you up, that, that tap you a message, and you're like, you're not even near. Like, how did you find me 70 miles away? Oh. And most of the time, they're not that cute. Sorry to say. <gasps> uh, but, but, wow. But we've talked about ugly people before. No, Episode one, if you haven't heard it. Um, an idea of a dick. Listen an, now. An idea of a dick. Listen now. On all stream platforms. Um, and so I was like, what? He would travel for you? I, first of all, don't like to travel much. No, no. So I, sorry, I prefer to travel, but not long distances. Like you were famous for like taking the train to transfer, some would say, for dick. I will well, not go beyond the five block perimeter of my place. Well, that's because, so I'm the kind of person when I, so I like to fuck people I know, or like, at least, I, I mean, people, it may not sound like that. It may sound like it from, doesn't. From, from my from stories, from my stories, it sounds like I just meet up with like random people <laughs> every single fucking time. But if I find somebody that I'm like, oh, we have sex well together. I'm comfortable around you. Let's keep this going. I'm going to, I'm going to try. I'll travel for that because i'd rather have a good experience with somebody that i at least know i'll have a good time with versus you know doing something nearby and being like "Mm, it's kind of disappointing well that your rubric is it 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 explains itself yes but like my measurement of like what i would do for travel is not like whether my experience is gonna be good it's just convenience true i'm like well and speaking of traveling for dick i recently I recently last Monday. Um, is this your town hall? This is this will be my town hall. Yeah, I mean I have a lot to say. Okay, I have a lot to talk about. Okay, um, but uh, I got Ubered to and from Jersey <gasps> City. Oh, yes, which yes. Was so congratulations! No, it was really nice. This man, I was at work. It was Labor Day, and I was at work, and this man hits me up, and I talked to him once or twice, maybe before on Grinder, and he was like asking me what I was up to, and I told him that I was at work. And he was like, any plans afterwards? And I said, well, I do have um, <laughs> my little writer's group um, that meets <laughs> every month. You mu- disclose that much information with your hookups? Yeah. You tell them you have writer's group? I tell. Well, I say, like, I'm a part of, like, a writer's group or whatever. So, like, we meet. I'm like, more alluring. I tell them I'm in the industry. Oh, I usually just say, like, I have, like, a class or something. But, like, for him, I was just like, oh, I have a writer's group, whatever. And he was like, oh, cool. He's like, do you want to stop by before? And I was like, well, where are you? And he went to Jersey City. And I went, ah! absolutely not gulp i've never been to jersey city before and i'm not about to do it now i've lived in the city for six years oh, you went and came oh mama he was like what would it take you to get you to come and i was like i don't know i could be easily convinced and then he was like i'll get you an uber and i was like say let's daddy so he <laughs> sends me an uber after i finish work he picks it picks me up takes me to jersey city never been before really nice <laughs> My compliments to the those who live there. Girl, it's cute. Sorry, I judged. <laughs> Sorry, I was such a hater for well, so long. Well, famously, everyone moves there because it's, like, more affordable for something nice. It's more affordable, and it definitely feels... At least the part of Jersey City that I was in, it wasn't, like, the downtown section. It was kind of, like, a more... It felt like Brooklyn to me. Um, like Park was, Slope, you know, like suburban Brooklyn, you know, where like the night, n- like the like. Yeah, it was, like, live. it was like that. And so then he, I get to his apartment. He welcomes me and he's so sexy. He was an attorney. Sorry, not to dox him or anything, but he's got money. People are attorneys. Yeah, people are attorneys. And so he welcomes me in gorgeous. Um, he, immediately, we just like start making out. And then he was like, oh, you can, you can use my bathroom if you want to like shower and stuff. And I was like, great. I did not have a douche. And granted, I was just kind of going over okay. with the idea. I was just kind of going over with the idea that I was just going to suck his dick and call it a day, you know. Again. But then he made it clear that he like really wanted me to like, he wanted to eat my ass. And so I was like, well, I at least should shower for that. But he had a bidet. He had a bidet. And I had okay. never douched with a bidet before. Um, there had been a like, I. <laughs> Nick, I've never used a bidet. Ever in your life? Well, Okay, for for the purpose, for this purpose, no. No. Well, neither have I. Not for this purpose. And so I was really kind of nervous. And so he had a really... He had a nice bidet. And so I was <laughs> I was in that bathroom for quite some time. And I was really kind of going down to town on my butthole. And then I took a shower. And I was like, okay. And I finished cleaning myself up. And I was like... I'm still like a little nervous. I was like, I don't know. I'm like not... Sh- I'm not certain that everything is out, in- out of there. But his dick we, wasn't... Okay, but so pause. I'm he, so sorry. We gotta pause. Okay, so we really have to dissect <laughs> your bidet experience. Because we're not gonna... We're not gonna sugarcoat anything here. How... 
thorough can it be? How can the power pressure be so strong that it counters a douche? Oh, so girly. Does that make sense? No, like, there's there's you, a dial. There's a dial you can control the water pressure. I understand that, but like the you the line act, it up with your hole. Yeah, you push act, out. The, you push out, and it goes straight up. But the accuracy of the enema is that it's literally inserted in you. So well, how do you well, know here's the, the water's going in? Well, you can feel it. You can feel. Trust and believe. You can feel. Um. But anyway, and also, I have come to realize, I take fiber anyway, so, like... As one does. As one does. But you can, like, over-douche. And I think I, what I realized after this experience is that I probably, like, over have overdone it in the past. Because there'll be times where it's like, oh, I'm all clear. And then, like, I'll be good. And then, like, five minutes later, I'll be like, oh, I gotta... I gotta go to the, the toilet. I gotta go to the toilet real quick. And then I come back, dirty brown water. Wait! But then, wait, so quick pause to, just to relate to the story that you're saying. So sorry to interrupt you. Girl, always but, interrupting. But I told you, you too, bitch. <laughs> but, 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 but this reminds me of that one time that I told you, remember, that I was, I was heading further uptown. Oh, you had the rumbles in your stomach. I, remember. I got the rumbles. I got off the train because I, f- I was fully done. I was going there for a threesome. It was really great in the middle of the afternoon. I was ready. I was excited. I was chewing my gum. I was listening to my jams. Get off the train. And then you get the infamous rumble. And you know at the bottom, you're like, oh, the rumble is not just a rumble. It's like something's happening. Something needs to come down. I had to emergency walk into a Wendy's in this uptown location, which thankfully ended up being like a newer Wendy's. So it wasn't like a this trash Wendy's. Ran to the restroom and had to emergency further clean myself in there because it, it was brown water plus... <laughs> The next person who used the bathroom was like, who dropped their Frosty on the Ooh, floor? Tra- <laughs> Girl. It was, I was Charlize, <laughs> I was Charlize Theron in Monster You're listening in the, in, in, in the bathroom when she's like showering. Yeah. Like, I was literally like this. I was just like doing everything in the Wendy's restroom trying to get myself cleaned up further. And then I still committed to go to this to this threesome and then th- counting on my lucky stars that I was ga- I was going to be okay and everything went well. No, it was clear. So I, I douched with the bidet. I showered. I was like, okay, it's, it's going to be fine. I was a little bit nervous, but I also wasn't anticipating to like have sex. But his dick was like boyfriend dick size. It was like not too big, so I wasn't too worried about it. Like yeah, so ideal. Yeah, it was ideal like for of, rough play and you and know, then like, like and a, and a kind of like a minimal preparation kind of thing. So we start hooking up, going really well. He's really into it. I'm really into it. And then at one point, he is like, "We don't have to have sex, you know." And I was like, "No." You have to fuck me right now <laughs> because I was so horny and he was so hot and like the way that he was he like did this thing with my hole which for those who've been following me for a while have know that I have a very tight little little pussy hole hemorrhoid, ga- hemorrhoid gate you know, hemorrhoid gate every single time I have sex I either get an anal fissure or I fucking get a hemorrhoid um, and so because these men which a lot of it is on my fault too because I don't I didn't have an expressed like hey yeah warm me up a little bit but this man would do this thing where he was like teasing my hole with his dick and it was like the hottest thing I've ever experienced in my entire life and so then I was like you have to fuck me right now I like turned into a gremlin and then um, we started to have sex and I was like we should probably lay down a towel and he's like yeah sure but we got so into the heat of the moment that mm-hmm. that didn't happen next thing I know he's like oh, I'm coming I'm coming and I was like oh, me too me too and then we both finished. And then he's like, okay, I'm going to pull out now. And I was like, okay. And I was so, so, because mama, white comforter. We were fucking on the white comforter. And that's why I said, get a towel. I said, get a towel. And he was like, he was like, yeah, I'll get a towel. And then never did. Clean as a whistle. And I was like, I feel so fish. Okay. Um, And then, and then he got me an Uber home. He didn't even have to do that. He didn't have to pay. Do you know how much that was? That probably cost him. It was like probably eighty dollars, both ways, on yeah, Labor this, Day. Yeah, on, 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 on Labor Day. On Labor Day. And also, when I went over to his apartment, it was like peak traffic because it was like four four thirty or whatever. Oh, this is an afternoon. Fuck! I thought this was a night. No, this is afternoon because I had my meeting. I had my group at seven. Oh my god! So then, but then, but then. I was running late because I kind of stayed a little bit longer than I was planning on. And then the Uber came and picked me up and then there was traffic. And so then I had to text the group being like, hey, everybody, um, <laughs> can we meet at 730 instead? We were meeting on Zoom, so it was fine. But I was like, can we meet at 730? Like, I'm running a little bit late. And then I also like tweeted at the same time, like, <laughs> just got dicked the fuck down in Jersey City. And one of the and our mutual friend um, 
sent me a screenshot of that tweet being and also my text being like i'm running a little bit late and all he said was lmao <laughs> he's like don't worry girl we got you and i was like thanks <laughs> um he has not talked to me since the man i had sex with but Did, um, have you reached out i haven't reached out he also hasn't been on grinder he just like hasn't been active but i would but you starred him i did star him yeah and i will <laughs> god willing fuck him again but um but yeah, that was uh, that was like a really happy story. Like I had like good sex, no ho- no tear, no, no blood, tear, no, no blood, blood, no blood when I pushed out his kids when I got home. Oh, uh, it was really beautiful. And it seems like both of us actually are the same on this front. That like we keep it until we go home. Um, a lot of people are like, hey, if you need to use my restroom to like whatever, whatever. But I'm like, yeah, I sometimes I do to like just make sure everything's good. I can't because I know it's gonna make a noise. <laughs> <laughs> And it's loud. And unfortunately, that is just something that, like, I you don't need. Yourself. I don't need the man to, to, hear, hear. to hear me go. <laughs> like, pushing out fucking cum out of my ass. Yeah. So I wait till I get home. And then if my roommate is home, I turn on the fan. Oh, and yeah. I play some music. I sit on the toilet. And I go. <laughs> just run the shower. Well, that, I could do that, too. But that's a waste of water. Oh, well, I would, I would always shower. Oh, uh, I would. I usually shower like I shower like you're late like, at night. You're like actually no, I never shower. I don't actually I ever. I'm like it. I'm like Mila Kunis and Ashton Kutcher. Oh they my never god! Shower. Wait, speaking of them, no, speak on it. Speak on them. Listen, this is all, uh, and uh, you know, I guess we we we. This is um an evergreen kind of you know podcast. I think it's 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 ending up to be at this point. You know, we're talking about things that are like non-linear that much, unless we're talking about a show. But we could be topical a little bit. And I feel like this culture. whole culture, and I feel like um, Miss Mila and Miss Ashton, you know, obviously with the whole, we don't even have to explain it, you know, like the Danny, I don't know when they say his name, the rapist was, you know, <laughs> accused and prosecuted and found guilty on rape counts and charged. and charged and sentenced to 30 years in prison, as he should. Um, yeah. And so they're coming out and then it came out that they sent, you know, the whatever uh, letters uh, what's it's, it called? A uh, person. Um, um, it's it's like it was just like something like um, character, character, uh, character char- letter. Char- yeah, like character letter, like their character witnesses yeah. or something. And listen, here's here's the thing with this with this gig that I wanted to like talk about real quick because uh, today was the day that also Drew Barrymore show like went back on, and like uh, the whole situation with like her coming back with no, with no writers and like everyone's being like jumping to everyone and like we're talking about you know we're performers and like we support unions and everything but it's like at which point do you just cancel somebody for doing something that may have been morally wrong when like technically Technically speaking, they did nothing wrong. So, like, technically speaking, Drew Barrymore didn't didn't do didn't break any SAG after rules. There is a gray line whether she broke WGA, WGA. rules, um, but we don't know if she hired non-union writers for the show or she's just opting to not do writers. And I think they're opting to not use writers. And so, you know, what I was t- telling is like, okay, everyone's coming hard on on her, but then there's Venice Film Festival happening right now with all of these actors that got the waivers from SAG-AFTRA because they're studios are smaller studios not the big ones that we're trying to fight against Mm -hmm. but then morally speaking it's just that this defeats the purpose of like fucking going on strike like the glamour and pizzazz of like the jessica chastain's and adam drivers doing press and getting like standing ovations it's even if miss chastain wants to wear her sag after a t-shirt on the press conference it's really not really doing much to help the cause because it only is as strong as the people who are at the very top signing on to it yeah and so like to which point is the question is somebody who's do a good person doing something that's like morally wrong like in in all senses of the, of of the word miss mila and miss ashton were not doing anything wrong by sending a, a character testament letter to the judge i mean legally you know? no legally morally, no. and it's like yeah. morally it's like you're garbage especially considering they run a sex trafficking organization which also has its sus elements on it but like it is so funny did you ever see the documentary on hbo about um the the that mom who- Katie blanchard 
Well, no, we know that. And, mo- and morally, <laughs> Gypsy honestly, Rose. Honestly, Gypsy Rose. Gypsy was annoying, okay? <laughs> Gypsy was annoying. I stand the mom. She's queen. <laughs> She's the queen. Gypsy's the queen. She deserved. Uh, mom, deserved. <laughs> mom deserved. <laughs> mom deserved. <laughs> mom, P- Patricia Arquette in that role. Mama. Oh, my God. If that was Miss Dee Dee or whatever her name was. Dee Dee. Dee Dee Blanchard. Dee Dee, yeah. Dee Dee was slaying, actually, in that movie. Uh, Dee Dee in real life did not slay, unfortunately. Did not slay, unfortunately. <laughs> um, but anyway. There's this documentary I watched that was will always stick in my mind, uh, an HBO film, obviously, because I love a murder documentary. This and famously, HBO is the only network allowed to have murder, yeah, mystery documentary. Yeah, 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 famously. And so, a mom. It's a documentary about a mom whose twelve year old kid tried to kill her, and killed. His younger brother, he was clearly mentally ill. And I can say ill, it's not being judgmental towards the <laughs> mental community. I can say, I can say mentally I ill. Can Girl, it. no one is jumping for that. <laughs> like, I, the way that you were just like, oh, I can say it. Girl, <laughs> relax, take a deep breath, it's oh okay. God, so much, so you can so say so mentally so ill. Okay. Uh, well, can we? Yeah. Well, we, we can say... We, 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 we People are say, mentally ill. We need to say differently able, but we can say mentally ill. Yeah. Yeah. And those are the rules. Those are the rules. <laughs> those are the rules that are set. Those are the rules that are set for us by the internet, by the Twitter, internet. TikTok, Facebook, and also just like culture and society yes, at absolutely. large. Thank you, you know, truly. And, so, and also because it's you know it's right, yeah. the right thing to do. Yeah. And so the whole documentary is about you know the story of her raising a murderer who at thirteen or fifteen whatever murdered his brother and then you know was gonna murder her. It's her fault. And then it's her fault. <laughs> Always with the mom. But then. The documentary is all about her visiting her son who tried to kill her and murdered her own kid, visiting him in prison every month. What would you not? Sending him a birthday card every time it's his birthday, even though he's a murderer. Okay, but you... (laughs) But you know what I'm trying to say? It's like... Well, no, okay, but from the perspective of a mother, like, I would probably... Like, if my child... uh, What if your child was a rapist, Nick? Listen... You can denounce... We're digging deep today. No, no, no. I mean, to, to, to be in the position of this mother who had her child be a murderer, um, you don't have to... Obviously, you can recognize what that what they did was obviously horrific and wrong and, like, obviously not the right yeah. thing to do. But then you can also recognize that that child is deeply disturbed. <clears> also, <throat> you're that person's mother. Like, you yeah. gave, you Like, that is your child that you took care of. Like, it's your respons... Like, they're your responsibility. Like, I... I can understand, like, the reasoning behind or the want to maybe cut off contact and be like, I just can't. But I also, if I was in that position, I don't think I would be able to be like, fuck my kid, whatever. I'd be like, yeah, I'd be like, I'm there's still a kid that I raised and loved. There's just something not right there. Not wrong with it. And so, you know, like, well, and that's like- how I feel like with like the Ashton Kutcher and Mila Kunis thing. Listen, it's like to play a devil's advocate, you can be like, well... I mean, there's a lot of gray area because there's lots of things that have like things that are swirling around about their past and like the organization you know, yeah. and like all that kind of stuff. But from a perspective of someone just writing a character letter for somebody that they're friends with, yeah, removed fully just from like who these people are and like what they represent, yeah, I understand because obviously you know that person in that one particular way exactly. So like, th- if that's how you know them and remember them, and they've only ever been nice, to- like. Yeah, like if someone reached out to you and was like, "Hey, can you write a character le- like witness letter or whatever?" I can understand where they're like, "Sure." Yeah. You know, but the way the way that the they have way. handled it since, I mean, obviously I wouldn't this situation wouldn't have done it. But um and they did clearly and the only reason they're apologizing is cuz they got caught. Of course. And, you know, and it's very PR like lawyer being like lawyer r- response to those kinds of things. Yeah. So I do I do think that there is there, I mean, it's it's nuanced, you know, depends yeah. on the situation. At the end of the day, I feel like it really is the way that it is handled because, like, yeah, like technically they just did. Well, like I guess it's asked in a court of law if you're if you're if you're if you're asked or like you have the opportunity to send like a character or whatever. So they have, a, but it was just in the nuance of it how they worded it about like you know this this child's gonna grow up without a father or whatever and like not really having any like mention of like you know and then their their response to the like the like backlash was also very much like kind of like anti-apology just being like whatever and so like the the ultimate thing is just like at the end of the day not everyone's like a hundred percent good not everyone's a hundred percent bad and like right now we're in such polarizing times that you know 
everyone just wants to jump at canceling anyone and i'm like do i want to cancel drew for doing this everyone in the comments is just like oh she's done you know like trash she's horrible well and i think like, that that doesn't that brings into question cancel culture exactly Cause, so well because cancel culture isn't it doesn't do anything no ultimately it's the if you've been i mean this is again I, this is not anything new it's not a new idea that people have brought up but it doesn't, yeah, it, yeah, we're not breaking ground. Yeah, we're not I'm breaking ground saying, here like, with this idea, but no, no, no. But it's but it is really interesting because it reflects earlier what I've seen in the news about Woody Hold about like Woody Allen talking about cancel culture because it really and he was like it hasn't done anything to affect my career and that's the truth. You get a public lashing for a week, maybe two weeks, yeah, and then after that, people pretty much move on. Yeah, you know, and people will maybe still remember and maybe some people take that into account. Like there are definitely some celebrities or people whose work I used to really enjoy that mm -hmm. I no longer um, consume because of behavior or like things that they've said or things that they've done. Cause it also brings up um, miss miss. What's her name? Murphy. Um, that, that, that bitch from Ireland. Um, Rossian Rosie Ro I don't know how you pronounce her first Rosie name Rosie Murphy this yeah. the musician yeah cause she got cancelled recently she got cancelled recently oh she see? made she made transphobic comments oh no and then, the like, music's good see okay well that's the thing and that's the thing and so she released her new album which just like just came out and I haven't listened to it even though I have been like a, I've been really enjoying her music um, in the past like kind of two years but I haven't listened to it cause I'm like girl you're your turf. Yeah. There is a certain line that I feel like everyone should agree on. Yeah. And I feel like with with Miss Meal and Miss Ashton, it is in very, very fine waters because like to not have the contextual awareness to know that we're not just talking about somebody that like got arrested from a DUI and like created a like we're talking about rape and that's like the one thing that like for me like any sexual abuse it's like, no, like I don't cross that line. So like I don't listen to Miss Michael Jackson, anyone. Sometimes people wanna like strike small talk with me or like about something happening. Like, yeah, we went to go see MJ the musical and I'm just like, Oh and I don't say anything. I'm like not I'm not trying to stir the pot either. So I'm not I'm like you tell me like you went to go see MJ the musical. My reaction's not this. Like Oh my god, I just saw MJ the musical. Oh, like I'm not doing that. Like I'm not trying to like stir the the, the pot, pot that much socially. But like, sure. I'm just like, oh, you know, I'm not gonna ask you about it. I'm not gonna tell you it's wonderful. Like I don't support that. Well, and ultimately, at the end of the day, it's personal. It's like, yeah, all, and like who you what you choose to, you know, that's your prerogative. You know, you can support whoever it is that you want to support. And like, again, it's nuanced. There are certain situations. I mean, it just depends on like what you can, what you morally find right yeah and unfortunately i do feel like they are very much in the wrong obviously yeah they're in a different kind of wrong they're gonna have to do some serious it's different like, damage I, control I mean that, that is one. very different from like drew drew and no. like and that kind of situation that i mean that was a, i think it's a bad business call at the end of the day it's just bad pr yeah, and bad ultimately PR. like it's gonna it's gonna she's gonna get some backlash for a period of time and then ultimately people are gonna forget about it and they're yeah, gonna move and, on and at the end of the day too is that like you look at the bigger scheme of things it's just like is drew still likable like is she like yeah i'm like yeah i, I, I still like her you know i don't sure and i don't approve yeah. i don't approve I'm like, but okay, I, I, the thing is like it's like it, putting yourself in the shoes of like if it were between the two of us like i would be able like if you were drew i would be able to have dinner with you tonight and be like okay you know that probably wasn't the best move but like you know we're gonna kiki and kaka and like yeah. i'm not gonna be like you're a bad person i'm not gonna be like drew you you know, there's some serious damage control between our friendship. You might, you did. You might have to strike up a conversation and be like, "Girl, come on, let's maybe let's, let's, let's not scab here." I get it. <laughs> maybe you're that kind of friend, but uh, we've talked about this plenty of times. Like, I'm the kind of friend that literally, like, I'm the girl you come to, and I'm like, "All right, you know, like, you something happened to you, or like whatever." Even between, I hope you know, like, when my day comes, when like I get backlash for something, okay, it's, coming. I, it's, it's coming. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. And then I'm gonna I'm gonna hit you up. We're gonna go grab a fucking like drink at freaking like a, a freaking monster bar or like flaming saddles, and we're gonna debrief it. And you're gonna be like, "All right, girl." Well. And I'm gonna have to make sure there are no cameras in sight. <laughs> I have to make sure no one takes yes. a, no one takes a picture because, girl, unfortunately, I care too much what people think. And uh, 
p- and public image. So I can't be seen yeah. with I can't be seen with you, but we can we can definitely debrief. <laughs> yeah, and, and and then I'll make a post being like, I want to thank my friend at Nickel. <laughs> no, and then, no, just like you you get canceled, and then you immediately like win an award or something, and then you're like, I just want to thank the person who stood by me through all, all of this. this behind closed doors every day, <laughs> and then you will find that Emmy rammed up your ass. <laughs> blood <laughs> dripping out that hole girl oh, so it would be your hole no i'm taking that emmy and i'm shoving it up your hole <laughs> okay speaking of holes my town hall mm-hmm. is the op not the opposite but like and you know it's not like a super lengthy story because i know we're trying to keep it a little brief today but um you went to jersey i went to about three avenues east from where i live this person that i told you about like they lived in miami um this guy I have already had sex with before mm-hmm. and he has, he's the one that I was talking about last pod. Um, the one that like, you couldn't really tell if it was like a huge dick or not because of like the point of reference in the photos. And then when I finally went there in person and like I had it, it was big and it was one of like the bigger ones I've had in my career as a sexually active person. Like if you had to give it a number, what would it be? I would I would probably give it just like a nine nine and a half. I mean that is big, girl. But but it was actually maybe just nine. But it was but it's well rounded. She had girth. Well rounded. She had girth. And I remember the first time that we had sex. Like I wasn't I wasn't prepared for it, just visually and mentally. Sure. And so like I brought poppers and like I did the whole thing. But like I remember at the end of us having sex, like I was a little spotty with blood. And I remember when he, when he was like done, he was like, "Oh, because he had put a towel down." He was like, "Oh, I was like everything good." He's like, "Yeah, good." He's like, "You just a, just a little blood. If that's okay." And I was like, "Oh, yeah, it's okay. it's okay." Not to interrupt really quick, but that just reminded me of one time I did have sex with a man that I've had sex with a lot, and his dick not that big, but we were having sex, and he was like, "Oh, I think you're bleeding," and I was like, mm-hmm. "Oh, okay." And I was like, "Let me run to the bathroom quick," and then I like got a little piece of paper towel, wiped my ass much more blood than i thought it was gonna be oh and then i was like fuck and i was like i wiped it a little bit more i was like okay we're good i walk back in he starts fucking me again and he goes you're still bleeding <laughs> and i was like <laughs> i was like hold on one second ran to my bathroom did, did more i was like rubbing it. i was like oh my god i felt like i felt like such a girl i know i was like girl my period oh my god this one time this this guy had a nosebleed on my ass while he was rimming me and he was like, oh, no. And I was like, uh-oh, you don't want to hear this about him. But then, like, I literally looked behind me, like, in a cartoon, looked behind me, and he popped up from, like, behind my ass, like, bloop. And then his fucking whole nose was bleeding. And I was like, oh, my God, your, your nose is bleeding. He's like, oh, no, I'm so sorry. <laughs> he got so red. He was so embarrassed. But then I was like, you know, obviously, I don't want to make him feel uncomfortable. But you obviously, weren't, you're sure it wasn't just gushing from your hole? No, it wasn't my blood. Oh, it okay. wasn't, no, it wasn't, it was, it was him, because it was hit from his nose. <laughs> and then at that point, you also start thinking, like, okay, well, like, you, you just know, lube. blood. <laughs> yeah, you just fucking slather it on. But like bloods, you Some know, like people are into that. bloods. People are sensitive to blood. You know, it's like oh, it's that's like, okay. so true. Yeah, yeah. And so it's like okay, like didn't want to freak him out, but also I'm like, oh my god, like how far did his blood go? Like, how far was he rimming me? You know, like his nose was really up. Was his nose fully like his his nose? He, it, was, he was nosing your ass. He was nosing my ass. <laughs> okay, Tell anyway, so I, nosing your ass. But we can have two apps with ass. In no, it. we can't. We'll anyway, figure it out. Anyway. So, Continue your story. So I'm go. I'm going back. He's fucking town. Like we, uh, and I was like really actively trying to pursue it because I was like really craving it. You know, I was I was really craving just like a, that kind of experience. You know, like I wasn't craving for boyfriend drag. I was I was craving for like Miami dick. Uh, from what <laughs> you wanted a thrill ride. You wanted a theme. You wanted to go to Six Flags. <laughs> six Flags. Six Flags. The Six Flags of dicks. Six Flags of dicks. And so, uh, well, some would say the Ohio title of that. Six, six Flags, Flags of, of dicks. dicks. Um, and so get there finally after much, much. Uh, debating on like when we could meet we're like please when can we get this happen and we have been trying to go back and forth the whole week finally making it happen walk over and i've already prepped and done everything i needed to do mm-hmm. i'm leading you into the story because i'm poop? being vulnerable today did you poop on i'm him? being vulnerable today stop did you poop on him I mean, nick i'm not there yet <laughs> we get there he I'm like scared. forced me oh my god, <gasps> oh my we, god. Uh, we gotta wrap in five minutes okay you gotta be, you gotta be quick Okay. Right. So, no, no, it's, it's, this is a great time to like, climax. Okay. So I get there. He's like, last time I remember, like, he didn't have ice for, like, a drink. 
So it's like, did you have... A, we were talking about him getting ice the entire time. No ice. Still didn't get ice. He was like, me, what do you want? He had like some like old ass Sauvignon Blanc from like New Zealand in his fucking fridge. <laughs> loser. Is, loser, which is famously too sweet and too fruity for my taste. Um, but too anyway, fruity? Yeah, New Zealand stuff. You? Too fruity? Uh, so, well, I'm <laughs> fruity enough. I don't want my soft to be fruity. Um, and so I'm like, okay, here we go. Just chug it. <laughs> like, wow, well, well, thank you. So we get there, and he's one of those that's also like, you know, you want me to stretch your hole? He's one of those that's very much like in the daddy scheme. Like he, very much like he's you know like six three. He's like you know like broad, and he's got that kind of like kind of shit going on. And I'm yeah. like small and petite. I'm so, aware. No, I'm aware. I'm aware so of the, the dynamic. The, so go, you can visualize the dynamic. It's very much like, oh my god, yes, I'm, I'm so, so small. small. Please, I'm... and so no towel. Didn't have time for towel. <laughs> didn't have time <laughs> didn't have time for towel we're there we're getting started and then from the very get go I was actually doing a lot better than what I expected like I actually started writing him which was a shock to me because like when it's something's big I, I'm not like the professionals I can't just like sit on it like I oh I have to when it's too big I have to start writing it really yeah because I'm because I'm, cause, cause I'm in control that way so then I can like lo- slowly lower myself no onto for it. me it's just like I like being like a like a like oh my god a, like a freaking like helpless little girl just, just laying put on it the bed. in like, oh my god oh just stick it I in like seeing, I, like, I like seeing the guys' eyes when it's finally going in all the way you know because then they're just like it's in and then I'm just like oh my oh so you start on your back no but no for this one I didn't oh my god oh. I have to finish in three okay, minutes okay no hurry up bitch we're going to it and i was so proud of myself i was like and then in the middle of it we're changing positions and he's like you know pulled out a few times and of course in your head you know i'm like it's big we're doing a lot and i'm like i just want to make sure everything's okay it was okay at one point he like starts fingering me and then when people do that i always get really self-conscious at the bottom because i'm just like i just want to make sure again like i'm not a professional kudos to all sex workers that can just like get fisted and fucking most figured. most people aren't professionals so and so i'm just like hey like um you know okay hope and he was doing it he was and then he even like rimmed me again in the middle of it so like i was doing fine down there sure i'm leading you to this i'm leading you to this <laughs> you're breathing hard i'm nervous and so we're finally getting to the end he was going for too long a little bit for my taste i was like okay come on just finish and then he wanted me to finish on top of him and then he did this thing where he was just like grabbing me by the shoulders and just like really pressing his dick up inside me to where oh. i could feel it up my gut oh i don't like that i don't like that and i could feel him reaching crevices that were meant to be reached he was, he was digging. He was digging. He was mining for gold. He was finding and unfortunately, gold. he found it. <laughs> but here's the thing: I was finished. He found it finished. He was done. Nothing had happened. Pulled out. Got out. Everything was fine. When I stood up from above him, you know, you your eyes like a cartoon just wander directly into the dick to make sure everything's good, right? Everything's yeah. clean. Everything looked good. He looked good. I was like, oh my god amazing it was good he had a towel on the corner of the bed uh-huh. grabbed it okay wrapped himself off i go ahead and of course just to get things done i was like i don't even want to check i don't even want to touch me i was really really wet i was really really wet <laughs> so then it was like i went there and then i wiped myself wow. and, I, and i just like but i don't i don't look i don't look i'm just like i just do the whole wipe thing and then just like fold it over and then just put the towel on the floor you know i don't want to look and like, oh my god great and then we're kissing we're kissing we're kissing and then um He's like, let me go to the restroom really quickly. I'm going to go pee. And I hear him pee. And then I run to the kitchen because I felt myself still, like, not fully clean. I was like, I want to... I wipe myself. It was potty. It was potty. Blood? No. Brown? It was It was coming down. Like, the, the his children were coming down with visitors. <sighs> and I quick... I'm being so vulnerable. No, that like, no, that is like literally, but like horrifying. But it was it was happening. But like at the, least the, it happened the, afterwards. The, 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 you know, in South America, El Nino and La Nina, the flood, it was happening. <laughs> and I was like, everyone evacuate. I was like, everyone get out. <laughs> everyone get and out. I was like, and he, I, 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 I heard him like finishing his pee, and I was like, <gasps> I was freaking out in the kitchen. I was like. <gasps> So then I was just like wiping myself down with paper towels and then I couldn't find the trash can. So then I just found like a random like Whole Foods like paper bag that he had out where he was just I guess like p- p- piling up the recycling of the paper. It was his meal. And, uh, <laughs> and I just like grabbed all the paper towels and I just threw it in there. 
And I was like, okay, great. Thank you so much. Mom, hands up. And they like ran home. Ram here. Why didn't you just use it? Why didn't you just use his bathroom? Because I was time. just, I was too self. I was like, what if I did more? What if I more? What if he found more stuff? Girl. I just got, and then like my, my, my qualm with this is just like, do I immediately acknowledge it? Like the one only other time this ever happened to me where like I, you know, was not good that it happened and we both acknowledged it. And then you went to the shower and we played it cool and everything's fine. You know, like pe- he was nice about it. It, yeah, you know, as, as, as they should be. Yeah, if you're sh- bottom shaming, you're a piece of garbage. Well, also, like, it's you're putting your dick up someone's yes. butt. Like, what do you expect to yeah. happen? And also, it's not just like a boyfriend dick size, this was like freaking Miami size. Yeah, also, like, girl, <laughs> if you yeah. haven't ever shot on somebody, you will. You, but I also, if you never shot on anybody, are you even doing it right? <laughs> well, this just reminded me, this is really quick, and then we'll have yeah, to, and then we wrap have to wrap it up in like two minutes. But I was like, I once my senior year of college hooked up with this older man, and it was like fine and we were hooking up and it was good or whatever and we were having sex and all of a sudden he was like i think you had an accident and i was like what and he pulls out and he's like don't worry about it runs goes and gets like a washcloth puts it under hot water gets all nice warm he wiped my ass for me like a baby under hot water <laughs> like it was warm baby. it was warm he's like he's like here he's like bend over <laughs> and then like wiped my ass for me and then he continued to fuck me afterwards you know what that what and it was a white washcloth mama it was it was I was like, girl, that's gonna stain. <laughs> Nick, Nick, um, Nick, hold on. For the first time ever in our app, I think both our pioneer and trailblazer is that daddy. Who and no, no, my cloth. Well, no, actually, it can't be because then afterwards. Oh no! Oh no! After we had sex, he then made proceeded to make really, really offensive racist comments to me. Um, and then but I was, he wiped your butt. But he wiped my butt, <laughs> and then I was like, you know what? I do have to leave. And then he paid for my Uber. So, oh. and then he did try to hang out with me again, and I was like, unfortunately, not a good idea. Because you're what? Racist. racist. But you know what? Just like we're talking about it, you know, like, might have been a huge racist, but he did wipe your butt. No, he did wipe my butt. And, and I, for that, you should be thankful. There's nuance to there's the There's nuance to this. And like, like, like we were saying earlier, to wrap this whole thing up, there's nuance to every situation. There's nuance to everything, and that was me being vulnerable, and I pioneer. appreciate everyone. Uh, I think I'm my own pioneer to be honest. Honestly, I was gonna for say myself. For escaping, for esca- unscathed, and honestly, if you wanna, if you wanna do commentary on this, like I feel like I almost thought about like addressing it once I got home, I sh- like texting him and be like, "Hey, just for the record, like when I got home, I may have noticed, you know, like we may have had a little bit too much fun, ha ha ha, ha but like you know." Whatever, but then I'm like, why would you say that? Why do I need? To, <laughs> why, why do I need to apologize? Like, yeah, why you don't do need, need to apologize. I'm like, no, I don't need to like say whatever. Girl, right? like if you're if you're using an app like Grinder, Sniffies, Scruff, whatever there is to like hook up with somebody, like then and there, you know what you're signing up for. Yeah. And if you if you are upset that somebody did something that their body naturally does, does. girl, you're the problem, yeah. not the person. Mm-hmm. So, and with that, that is, this has been this episode of Pioneers oh and Trailblazers. God. Trailblazing. My trailblazer was just going to be myself, too, because I was, I was just going to say that I love, today at work, it really annoyed me, but when people, um. Yeah, uh, Nick was having kind of like a. I was having a an off day. Off I'm, day. I'm like having an off day, but week. my favorite thing to do is, um, when people are really annoying and they're like, I work at a restaurant, I'm not going to say which one, but when people. Downtown. When people <laughs> ask, when people ask, um, <laughs> what they should order when they come, I go. I can't afford to eat here. <laughs> and it's immediately crickets. <laughs> and so, and so, and that I love doing that because it's like, why would you want, first of all, <laughs> I'm not going to suggest something to for you just for you to try it. And then immediately be like, I hated that. I know how people work in the city. Listen, I know. So I, anyway, I'm my own trailblazer. Peru's his own pioneer. This has been pioneers and trailblazers. And buy tickets for a show. Buy tickets for a show. October 14th. And November 10th, Wait, part is it of o- New York Comedy Festival. Whatever. If the, if the October date is wrong, just go to our links. Yeah, go to our, them. go to our, follow us on Instagram, Pioneers and Trailblazers. Follow us on TikTok, Pioneers and Trailblazers. Pioneers I'm at Hey Peru on Instant TikTok. I'm at Nicholas Rose on Instagram, at Clownface Binge on TikTok, and at Clownface Bitch on Twitter. Yes. And then New York Comedy Festival. We're coming for you. New York Comedy Festival. Please don't forget to subscribe on YouTube. Also, follow us here on Spotify or wherever you get your podcasts. Rate, Rate us so you, you know, we keep making making this for you yeah we're making this for you thank you bye